I would like to now invite uh, Robert Louis Lemington, Chief Legislation Unit, UN Abidat. Thank you. Um, as with previous speakers, my thanks to the Government of Spain and the City of Valencia for hosting us here. Um, there are certainly far worse places to find oneself for a few days. Um, I hope that I can actually go home claiming to have been productive as well, but I'm not so sure I will find that as easy as saying I enjoyed myself. Um, thank you also to all of you for being here. I mean, I think U4SSC for us is founded on the principle of cooperation and coordination. Smart cities is one of those subjects that in recent years has become the hot ticket. Everybody wants to be associated with it. Everybody wants to have something to do with it. Sometimes they may know something about it, sometimes they may not, but they still want to be involved with it anyway. This means we have a proliferation of activities all around the world of enormously varying quality, enormously varying relevance. Some are very niche, some are very broad. Trying to work out who is doing what and what is going on where is an enormous challenge. Um, we find initiatives such as U4SSC extremely helpful in being able to pull the strings together and to try and make sense of things. Also, a group like this is an incredibly effective peer review mechanism. For those of you here, you know what you're talking about. We may have experts within Habitat, our sister agencies may have experts, but still nothing that compares to the global community. Bringing people together, putting things before them and allowing them space to react to them is the most powerful tool for proving the validity of whatever we are all collectively trying to do. Um, the work of United for Smart and Sustainable Cities for us cuts across many areas. Habitat organizes its, well, we are, first we are the UN agency for coordinating work on urban development. Um, by urban, <coughs> we take a very broad point of view. Essentially, all permanent human settlements will be our concern. We start with looking at the essentials, services, shelter, and equality within settlements. Does everybody have fair access to what they need? We then expand upon there to all kinds of other related services. We organize that work, we connect, we're a fairly small agency, we are about 200 staff globally, um, probably several thousand consultants as well. But our principal role is to bring together the different work going on within the UN system and connect that to different groups. So we also host the UN Advisory Committee on Local Th Authorities, for example, as a way of connecting the, U the UN system with local governments. Um, we organize this at the moment essentially along five lines. We have a first area which is focused on spatial equity. How is a city organized? How is it designed? How do people get access to that? Again, smart cities comes very closely into this. Smart cities are going to affect mobility, transport, connectivity. They affect economic growth, opportunity. They affect service delivery across the city. They affect how we design space. So very clearly, technology and smartness is essential to our, achieving, our goal of achieving spatial equity. Our second area of work is prosperity, which also includes the deployment of technology. The idea is not simply to look at income and wealth, but also to look at well-being and happiness and contentment within a city, political stability, other issues like this. The ability to move information, the ability to trade on information, the ability to create new industries is fundamental to this sector. And it links very closely back to the question of spatial equity because new technology allows us to do new things in different places, in different ways. Our third area is climate and environment more generally. We clearly, as is Green Standards Week by its, total, by its title, we need to become more efficient, we need to make better uses of the resources around us. We also need to be able to manage mitigation, adaptation. An awful lot of cities are extremely vulnerable to environmental impact. The use of technology can help us predict that, help us model it, help us mitigate it, help us adapt and change going forward. Um, we are looking to deploy that in multiple areas, whether that be technology for houses at a, at a simple level or up to resilience modeling and planning. Our 
fourth area is around emergency and crisis. In many ways, that might not seem as directly relevant to a smart city discussion, but frequently when the city systems break down and we're having to make emergency interventions, technology is part of the solution. It may be at a very basic level in terms of rebuilding government structures, improving service delivery. It may be in, in broader ways um, of reconstruction. Um, finally, we're also very involved and very concerned with, I mean, previous speakers have mentioned the SDGs. The SDGs are a global set of targets. We have a periodic process for monitoring the achievement of the SDGs. Habitat has a responsibility for reporting on this progress. Our country's making progress in achieving the SDGs from the point of view of urban development. That may be from social, political, or economic, or environmental criteria. Technology and smartness will be one, a part of the means of achieving those sustainable development goals. It will also be fundamental to measuring. Uh, big data is going to become of increasing importance, but simply the, the, tech, the use of indicators and technology for accessing the, the, the key points that we want to measure. We are also relating that to the, new urban, the achievement of the new urban agenda, which is a far more diverse urban development set of goals than the SDGs. We need to work with everybody to pull this together. It's not possible that Habitat and an institution will be able to do this alone. And we're extremely grateful, first to the UN family, particularly in this context to ITU and to U4SSC for being partners in this task, but also to everybody else. It is not the UN is there as a representative of member states and a representative of the citizens of member states. We're there to advance everybody's interests as a collective, and we very much would like to, to continue these partnerships to achieve these things together. Um, we are very optimistic about the role of U4SSC, for example, the key performance indicators that have been mentioned. We see that as a critical part of a global system for monitoring progress against the Sustainable Development Goals and the new urban agenda. We have the comparative advantage of different agencies. ITU is the lead agency on ICTs globally for the UN system. They have an understanding of that that in Habitat we will never achieve. They are able to pull the constituency that we have here today together. Habitat, we have the, the knowledge of cities, we have the experience of city growth, we have the experience of the impact of city growth and regeneration. We can put these together and develop great tools. And with the rest of the organizations who are here, that creates a very powerful partnership. The, the Secretary General and the Deputy Secretary General are very aware of and are following quite closely and are depending upon to develop that part of the global development program. So it's a great direct selfish benefit of us, dare I say, as Habitat to be part of a partnership like this. We gain an awful lot from the knowledge and experience that you all bring to the table. I hope that we are able to contribute along with sister agencies, not just ECE and ITU, but also all the other partners of U4SSC, which is a wonderfully diverse partnership. We hope that you will benefit from what we can bring to the table as well in terms of Netflix experience forum. Um, we hope that will continue. We uh, are committed to, to working through this mechanism and we look forward to uh, hearing all of the exciting products and future activities that will go on today. Hopefully we can uh, find a few that we can borrow from and uh, exploit and use in many, many ways. Um, and uh, we look forward to the future of that. So thank you very much for this opportunity and I look forward to working with you.